There's been a, a bit of a pattern acknowledged here on the channel. That being if I took a lot of notes on the topic, that it means I either really enjoyed it or really did not enjoy it. Um, it's just been something that has been picked up on throughout the existence of the channel. So, uh, stick around and find out which way it fell, because uh, after that open rolls, I'm going to talk about, well, the 2023 two hour and two minute Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and uh, like I said, figure out if this animation celebration is uh, positive or uh, less positive. So before I break it down, the analysis of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, I've got to talk to you about a different comic book related uh, venture, that being my comic book. My 68-page uh, graphic novel, that is, Everlasting Survivors, Volume 1, All Day Long. This is uh, the Jeff Hicks A cover, this is Nick Crook B cover. There are additionally C, D, and E covers available via the link in the description of this video where you can pick yourself up a Gamble Comics hat and Everlasting Survivor shirt, posters, like I said, the, the cover options. Anybody who makes a purchase, they get a uh, complimentary Gamble Comics sticker. So uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, before I break down Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, uh, I'm going to spoil just a little bit. Um, so, Josiah is the one who, who did the math and he said, Oh, if there are a lot of notes, it's it's bad news, presumably. And I was like, yeah, not always. Because, like, I know uh, the video that's coming out on my birthday, I have tons of notes, but it's there are, it's because it was a, a series and, uh, you know, I just wanted to hit the high notes, basically. But anyway, uh, the thing that I realized is that if I'm struggling to convince myself to record the video, that's a bad sign. Um, and so, with that, let me uh, break down my feelings, thoughts, on uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Only 1 minute and 11 seconds in, and I think the makers of this are trying to give the viewers a seizure. Uh, just with the open itself because everything is so colorful and jumpy and all over the place. Uh, so Gwen returns in this and she has a, a mental monologue while playing drums. It was just a bit much, but you know, it was okay. We find out while she's thinking and playing drums and such that this Gwen Stacy's Peter Parker was the lizard in her universe. I uh, I didn't expect that. I've never picked up a, uh, a ghost spider or spider Gwen or whatever this universe's Spider Man's comic book before, so I didn't know. I don't even know if that's accurate to the way that the book was written, but it was uh, well executed. And I I thought it was interesting that Peter uh, gave himself the the lizard DNA because he wanted to be on Gwen's level. Uh, seeing her as out of his league, I thought that was intriguing. I like that that Peter was smart enough to figure out that Gwen was Spider Woman, as they call her. Um, not not Ghost Spider, I guess, but whatever. Uh, Captain Stacy and Gwen's relationship is very touching, and I I expect he will not live. Uh, past this uh, this outing, unfortunately, just the, the 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 beats that they're setting up make me feel like that he's going to pass away fairly early on in the the act, if, or you know, like Act One, whatever the the early part of the movie. 
especially when a another dimension vulture comes to Gwen's world. He he looks really cool. He uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Just you're, you're gonna have to look him up because he he looks really cool, like kind of Renaissance e esque or what maybe. But uh, they have a he, vulture and Gwen have a great fight. <laughs> uh, during the fight, I said hello, Miguel. Uh, I didn't expect to see him so early, but Spider-Man 2099 has shown up, and I've I've always been a big fan of the the 2099 concept, and it cracks me up how when the the series the books launched in the 90s they felt so far away 2099, and the the more that time goes on it doesn't seem that far away at all. We also get a, a pregnant Spider-Woman, which is, you know, head-scratching to me, but somehow she's able to to put up a fight and, uh, you know, help out Miguel and Gwen. Uh, they do a good job of saving civilians from a falling helicopter. Go Team Spider. Uh, <laughs> Captain Stacy shooting his, uh, his gun into the air to show who we know is his daughter, that he means business, to me is eh, just a little dumb. Because I, 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 I've never understood or enjoyed that idea of, oh, I'm going to shoot in the air to prove to you I, I can pull the trigger. It's like, uh, shoot in the air, A, not a great idea, and B, not the same as shooting a person, especially when they're your kid. Not that he knows that, but... I, it, it, I keep questioning why Captain Stacy is so unable to listen to Gwen. Um, the upside is they didn't kill him, so that's that's good. I'm, I'm a fan of uh, not killing him, especially early. But I, I just don't understand why he's so... bullheaded, I guess? Like, regardless of what you previously had presumed, Pops, you would think that he could understand that your your daughter, Gwen, did not kill her friend, Peter, so... That seems pretty simple, you know, do that math, put that together. Hey, we're all good again, right? I don't know, I just, I don't get that part. Gwen and Captain Stacy's unwilling or unable to come together and uh, their relationship being in disarray makes the decision for Gwen to just leave her entire universe behind puzzling to me. But, I mean, that's what she does, and then we pop over to Miles' Earth, and his parents are waiting for him to arrive at a school meeting, but, you know, Spider-Man being Spider-Man, he's, he's got to get himself into uh, shenanigans. Uh, the Spot is trying to rob a convenience store, and this whole fight is much less monumental feeling than the Vulture Museum fight was in the Gwen universe. Miles is very good at, you know, both art and graffiti art, and uh, you can tell that when you look or see his, his notebook that he ca uh, keeps with him. I'm sure that this movie thinks that the, the Spot slash Spider-Man fight is funny due, due to the musical choice and, like, the sound effects and the things that they're doing, but I don't, I don't know. I just... I'm not, I'm not into, I don't think it's as funny as they think it is. Um, even pedestrians are acting like that it's kind of a ha-ha thing, but I just, I, I don't know, I don't get it. I don't, I don't see the humor. The one upside about the fight between Spot and Spider-Man is Spot trying to explain to Spider-Man that he made Spider-Man and how Spider-Man made him. I find the, the entire concept interesting in general just the idea of how someone or something can be so monumental to one person and mean nearly nothing to another person uh i know personally I've, I've experienced that in my life where you know something will go down something that feels big to you but then you see or interact with the person you thought or felt like was a big thing and then they think it was nothing so i like that part of the the spot slash spider-man goings on Spot is a is a very strange villain. The first hole Spot pops 
into when he figures out that he can go through his own spots and get to different dimensions feels like it's a, a Mike Allred world. I mean, he's a great artist, so great choice. Uh, then the next one is a Lego world. Then uh, the Venom world. Uh, these are very fun pieces of fan service. So if you if you are into the Marvel or or even pop culturally uh, into uh, you know just fun pop culture stuff, it, they've got a lot of nods for you in this movie. Another thing I enjoy is the progression of the the spot character, who at first when we meet him thinks that what happened to him was a curse and then once he figures out he can go to other dimensions finds out it's more of a blessing and so I, I do find that to be fun but I'm not a fan of parents who tell a kid that his life is not his life oh oh your life is ours to do with as we please that I just I find that to be dumb and that's how Miles' parents are treating him now, I get that they're frustrated with him because of his, what would you call it, uh, antics, you know, Spider-Man antics that they don't even know that he's doing, but uh, not a not a big fan of how that they treat him when he, they're angry with him. <laughs> Gwen literally dropping in on Miles is fun. I like that, that Gwen freed his uh, collectible action figure from its plastic prison, because uh, I don't know, I just I think you gotta let them breathe. You don't you don't buy them to keep them locked up. So uh, so clearly Gwen is shrugging off her responsibilities, right? She, she's hanging out with Miles when she should be stopping Spot. That feels like what's happening here. Miles and Gwen have a very a nice relationship. I, I enjoy how they can they see each other's perspective on this whole Spider Man slash Spider Woman thing. I was right, yep, Gwen was putting off her responsibilities, and that led to Spot getting ahead of the game, and uh, so Spot is now on the loose, and Miles is going to help Gwen go across the Spider-Verse, you know, there's the title, because when Gwen left her own world, uh, she was basically recruited to, to stop anomalies. But instead of stopping Spot, she hung out with Miles, which caused the whole problem with this here movie. Or not the problem with the movie, but the problem this movie's got to solve. <laughs> um, one of my biggest issues with this film is choices that lead to what I consider pacing issues. So, this is one of the first times when I really realized that if we just would not have pretended like Miles wasn't going to follow Gwen into or across the Spider-Verse, I mean, then we could have saved a little bit of time because why Why are we even pretending like Miles wasn't going to follow Gwen? Like, don't even pretend. So he walks away from the, 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 the slide tunnel that she opens and he pretends like he's not going to go and then he runs at it and goes in it. You know, well, he was always going to go in, like... Why are we why are we acting like that that he was gonna make any other decision? I just find that to be dumb. So uh the the universe spot went to and that Spider Woman Gwen and Spider Man Miles are now in with Spot. Um it might have had a different name, but I keep writing Mumbai Manhattan because it's a very uh, stylized world. <laughs> Spider-Man is so condescending in this world, and it's so hard for me to get behind him. He's just so... I didn't catch the guy's name. It was another like Peter Parker thing, but I didn't catch his name, but man, the less we get of this dude, the better, because he's such an egomaniac. And... Then we get an additional egomaniacal spider figure when enter Spider Punk. He's also irritating and frustrating and uh, just a pain. I, I don't like this uh, Hobie Brown. Uh, yeah, this at this point is really when I started going into the negative feelings about this whole thing because 
<laughs> so the the Indian uh, stylized Peter Parker name that I forget, and the the Hobie Brown Spider Punk, they both. Well, they, they make Miles and Gwen seem like the most humble and responsible adult characters that you can meet, even though they're both chit kids. Um, so, in Mumbai, Manhattan, uh, their version of Gwen, uh, she's in, you know, big time danger, so they've got to go help, and then Miles saves her dad from being... Uh, you know, killed in this big fight. Good job, Miles. Or, you know, so we think at the time. So I literally noted, I said, is this movie going to keep making me think someone is going to die and then not do it much like how they did with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3? Question mark? I'm not sure. But uh, once Miles saves the... The, I think his name was Inspector Singh, so the Captain Stacy of this universe. He's taken to, I think they call it this, the, the, yeah, this Spider Society. And at, when they're there, Miles bumps into an imprisoned Donald Glover, who was the in, inspiration for the Miles character in the comics, so that's fun. And, and, that the whole time that Peter or not Peter, uh, Miles and Gwen are walking throughout this the Spider Society, they they bump into a million different versions of Miles or Peter or Gwen or just every version of uh, Spider Man basically from different worlds. Because in Miles' world, Gwen had lied to him and said that that the the team she joined was an elite force. And in reality, it's literally every Spider-Man except him, basically, at this point. It, it feels like... So, another really draggy part is when we get to um, introduce Miles to Miguel O'Hara. And, and so I ask, I said, am, am I wrong, or are we basically just giving Miguel the, the TVA slash Kang storyline from the Loki TV show? Where oh I've got to I've got to prune out the the this and the do that except instead of pruning, uh, he calls things uh, canon events. So we have once again another human uh, cameo or a cameo of a human. This time it's Andrew Garfield. Cool to see him, much like it was cool to see uh, Donald Glover. But. When Miguel explains to Miles that Inspector Singh, oh, shouldn't have been saved because it was a big deal, Miles figures out that, that wait, you're telling me that a captain is supposed to always die in the Spider-Man story? My dad's about to become captain. And he, uh, Miles, says, I can't let my father die. And it's crazy that all these dummies want to let it happen. What is this crap? So, uh, Toby... Maguire and and Spectacular Spider-Man from the cartoon, they both cameo in this scene as well. I, I swear this movie is just dropping these Easter eggs to keep me from hating it. Because I 100% agree with Miles that, much like they say in Terminator, there's no fate but what we make. And thus, to say that... Uh, a captain must die for for Spider-Man's story to go right, right? And I just I'm not I'm not with that. I really feel like they're they're trying to make a guy that I liked as a hero, Miguel O'Hara, the the villain of this story. He he and even imprisons Miles Morales to prevent him from to, from saving his dad. <laughs> they do this really fun Spider-Man pointing meme, but it's done like a million times in one shot. How are so many of these Spider-Men sellouts or brainwashed and blinded into following Miguel O'Hara? I, I just, I, I, I don't know. It puzzles me. I will say this, the, I think Jake, Jack, Jake or Jack Johnson from New Girl coming back as uh, old man Peter but now with a daughter, I do I do enjoy him. So 
the thing the thing is there are so many like ups and downs and uh i don't know there there are even some nifty twist twists so like uh I forget the name of uh, the Moon Knight actor. Uh, oh, it's Oscar Isaac. That's it. And so he he's the voice of Miguel O'Hara. But there there's an interesting twist where where Miles was the original mistake. And when it's explained to him, it's a good reveal because Miles does seem to have little in common with all these brainwashed Spider-Men. So maybe that's some justification, I guess. But because spot brought a spider or that was supposed to bite uh, uh, someone in a different dimension and ends up biting miles and his i don't know maybe maybe they'll explain it but the problem is that we get to the end of the film and there's no actual end there's no actual resolution because um miles uses technology that will read his DNA, and send him to his dimension. But what it actually does is it reads the DNA of the spider bite, sends you to the dimension of that spider. So now, Miles is captured by a Miles Morales prowler, and his uncle, who's his, I don't know, prowler trainer, if you will, and Gwen is over in Miles' universe trying to save the day over there. And when the movie ends with To Be Continued... I just don't like that there's no resolution, especially with the writer strike and the actor strike and and all of the the questions that linger. And so to me, this movie gets a three out of five. It's it's fine overall because there are enough positive elements. Like I said, Toby and Andrew and Spectacular and Donald Glover, the, the pointing meme, all the the fun things help balance out my negative feelings toward it so that's why that it gets the overall fine um but yeah thank you for tuning in uh come back tomorrow for trivia and uh enjoy